Super excited to have E. McNeil here, creator of Darknet and Tactera, which are both super awesome games for the Gear VR. Daydream just came out, which is really cool. Uh, I think it's also on the HTC Vive um, and Oculus. So all of these different platforms, so you can definitely go check it out. It's really versatile. Uh, Darknet is probably one of the, my most favorite games, so it's uh, super awesome to have you on today. Thank you so much. Yeah, with Darknet, you started, that was like an Oculus mobile gym project. So I guess, how, how did you, how did you guys, I guess, come up with the idea for Darknet and uh, what kind of got you into VR? Well, what I usually say is like, I backed the Oculus Rift Kickstarter. Yeah. First thing, <laughs> 2012 or whenever. Um, and so in the middle of 2013, I had an Oculus Rift DK1 sitting around and I was playing with that. And whenever I put it on, uh, I felt like I was a hacker. I felt like I was a character <laughs> in a cyberpunk movie. Nice. Um, and it just seemed like really like obvious, fun, um, you know, idea for a game. And so, yeah, Oculus, as you mentioned, uh, they did a game jam, the, the Oculus yeah. VR jam. And um, it was like three week game making competition to try to make something, you know, yeah. some kind of content for the DK1. Cause there just, there wasn't much stuff yeah. and Oculus wanted to see it. Um, and it, it kind of worked out in a lot of different ways um, because if you set a game in cyberspace, nobody knows what that looks like. You're not yeah. trying to make it realistic in any way. So you have complete control to make it um, comfortable or, you know, mm -hmm. it turns out cyberspace looks exactly how, you know, I had the artistic ability to create in Unity. Right. Um, you know, or <laughs> yeah. abstract so I could make it work on a Gear VR. Um, True. It gave me yeah. a lot of flexibility from a creative perspective and um, from like a game mechanical perspective to create rules that mm -hmm. were fun but fit with the um, the theme. Right. So, so so would you say that, I guess, the theme came first? Or like you were like, OK, it has, VR has these limitations, especially the DK1, the Gear VR with the Note 4. Like, it has these limitations, so I want to create an experience that it works within these limitations. Usually, when I make a, you know, pick a game idea, mm -hmm. I have a lot of ideas floating around. Yeah. Um, but. I, I'm sort of looking for an idea that um, it meets in the middle between those two things. Like sort of what is a good fit for the platform and then what do I want to make? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so like, I don't know, but the game I made before Darknet was an Ouya game that mm -hmm. was like completely different. It was you know, designed for local couch, you know, multiplayer. And that was sort of just as much informed by the platform. Um, Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, the, the idea was there from the beginning um and it was very it was much more you know it was very flexible like it, it wasn't um dark net as you could play it today oh, absolutely <laughs> yeah. and and i sort of had to figure that out e even just in those first few weeks where i was like i prototyped like one control mode or you know means of locomotion right and i'd figure out okay that's not going to work let's try something else um and it, right. it kind of started to take shape under that pressure well it's also so interesting because like i think darknet works really well because it doesn't have that locomotion it's just rotations you even have the uh the swipes to to let you rotate so you could even play it on a couch an airplane it was like really designed for a lot of different play styles so was that kind of did you user test that a lot or did you just kind of like i was like i need to add in all these different things because this is how i play it it was a little of both mm -hmm. um i was aware that uh motion sickness could be a problem Mm -hmm. um, and again, this was very, very early on yeah, in exactly. you know, the, the VR dev. And so I, I experimented actually with a lot of different things. One thing that I discovered was straightforward motion didn't make that many people sick. Yeah. And so I figured even with acceleration, which normally you try to yeah. stay away from, I could afford to have some of that. But constant motion or rotation didn't fare so well. And I made myself sick a few times. Like, you know, I was like, <laughs> Everyone I, was does. Of, I, I was knocked out of commission a few times. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I basically decided that it should be stationary most of the time, mm -hmm. but it's okay to do movement from node to node yeah. um, with like straightforward and, and backward motion. Yeah. Um, and, and I did sort of adjust the, the acceleration on that to, to try to make it a little, you know, more comfortable. Awesome. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, I, I mean, I haven't like looked at the, all of the reviews, but I mean, I don't see anyone complain about it, which is really nice. It, it's, it's, it works for most people. There are some people who still get, um, yeah. sick with it, 
But um, at Oculus's request, when it came out for the Oculus Rift and then mm -hmm. for later platforms, it did include a comfort mode where there's absolutely no acceleration at all. Got it. Um, so yeah, that, that option should work for literally everyone. <laughs> oh, that's great. And I mean, I keep seeing this live chat go up and up and up, and I'm like, okay, there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of questions coming in. Yeah, um, I'm actually gonna kick it off with one from Twitter first. Um, I so the the person who actually requested that you come on with his name is uh, Dev Puppy. He's, he's here. Been, yeah, and he's also in the chat. And his question from Twitter was, um, have you gotten? Do you have an iPhone? And I guess have you played with AR Kit or AR or Hololens or any of that stuff? Is that something you're looking to build things for? Um, well, first of all, thanks for requesting that I do this. I have thought a, a fair amount about v, uh, AR. Mm -hmm. I have not taken many steps to actually build stuff for it. Fair so enough. like I have an iPhone, I have not played with AR kit. Um, and I got a demo of HoloLens. So I, I've sort of, mm -hmm. um, I've seen HoloLens in action. Yeah. But uh, I, you know, I, I don't have a dev kit of my own and I haven't like mm -hmm. taken concrete steps to get my stuff on there. That's fair. Um, with, with that said, for my later games, for um, Tactera and Skylight, yeah, both of those games, um, you know, they take place in sort of a small area in front of you, and the idea was like they would be really good like coffee table games, um, <laughs> or, like in the future when AR is a thing. Yep. And um, I, I there is like one avenue right now. It's not a sure thing, but it's possible that um, at least one of my games will be coming for AR Kit. Awesome. Um, you know, with yeah. the help of, of a partner. Um, wow. but that's not a sure thing yet. And it's sort of, it's, you know, their decision. But I'm hoping yeah. that that'll happen. Oh, that's so I, cool. I think it would be cool. That would be so cool. It's, it's also, I, it's interesting you bring up Tartera for AR because you're like, you're, you're right. That makes sense. Um, at the same time, though, like if I'm looking, I think HMDs are different from AR kit. Um, but if you're looking at AR kit, I think it'd actually be better just on the flat screen without AR. Um, I think it's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like, there's a novelty of like moving your your phone around and like being able to check things, but it's also so convenient to just be like, I can be lazy <laughs> with a phone right in my hands. Yeah. yeah. That's the, the, one of the things to watch out for. Like that I have had on some of my games, people mm -hmm. complaining that it doesn't need to be in VR. Um, and you know, in some cases it's like, well, okay, it doesn't need to be in VR, but it's better in VR. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you still want to make sure, though, that you're actually taking advantage of the platform. Yeah. Um, especially if you're asking people to go out of their way and get special hardware. Absolutely. Um, all that. So I haven't tried uh, Tactera in AR kit. Um, I, you know, I don't know how <laughs> worthwhile that would feel. Um, I think it yeah. could be quite cool, you know, and it does, like, sort of fit in some ways. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to uh, push it too, you know, too hard if it doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's worth experimenting with for sure, but like, I guess you'll only know once you figure it out or test it out. Yeah. This one is, what are your thoughts on HoloLens and what types of games will be successful with AR? Um, If any, let's, yeah. let's put an if any in totally. on there. Um, I, I don't feel as like uh, bullish on AR as, as some folks. That's fair. Um, like I mean, I, I, by which I mean, I, you know, to give context, I've seen projections and you know estimates of the future where people are saying that, like, you know, in ten years AR is going to be five times bigger than VR, and um, you know there there are there's technical issues to get through, but mm. then also um, it's it's you know it's not clear yet what it's good for. Um, I, I do believe AR could be more useful for non-gaming uh, applications. Mm. I'm not sure. Um, the situations where it'll be better for games. Yeah, no, I agree. Have you um, have you seen the movie Sword Art Online Ordinal Scale? I've so, not. It's uh, something Palmer recommended, and so I, I figured I'd check it out. Um, it's it's basically so Sword Art Online is like this VR experience, and then that movie is about porting that VR experience to AR, and like that they. They try to make it seem cool, but they point out so many flaws with the experience, which kind of like hones in exactly with what, what you're trying to say. Also, mm -hmm. it's 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 going to be difficult, that's for sure. There might be some that work, but I think at the same time, um, it it's novelty that's going to carry it. And then I think with similar like similar trend with VR, you'll realize some things don't work, some things work, and then the novelty starts fading away. So I, I guess we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I can imagine certain things. Like, um, have you seen The Void? Yeah. Uh, the like, sort of warehouse. I haven't tried it, but yeah. 
Yeah, like I think that's a sort of a really neat um, case. And maybe there's things you can do in AR where you're taking real world spaces and yeah. turning them into game spaces so that you could actually like move around your house or, you know, yeah. park or something like that. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's stuff like uh, Pokemon Go or whatever, but yeah. I don't think of those as, um, you know, fundamentally AR games. Like, I think that success was because it was Pokemon and because it was a location-based game and sort of an alternate yeah. reality game. Yeah, um, not that's very fair. Have you tried the Microsoft Hall, or not Hall, it's the uh, Acer uh, kit or whatever that's called? I think it's just the Acer headset. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I have not yet, but I uh, I have a date to try it. So... <laughs> There you go. I'm looking forward to it. I've heard good things so far. I've heard mixed things. Like, uh, the track, I mean, because the tracking is the same as HoloLens, so it's all in one, um, but mm -hmm. it glitches out sometimes, which is unfortunate. Same with the controllers. Yeah. So let us know what you think, because I okay. I haven't actually tried it, so I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. I, I would expect it to be sort of a, a slightly, you know, lower tier experience, but, um, you know, if it's, past a certain level, you know, if it's, if it's good enough, then it might be sort of the more accessible um, headset. True. You know, a, a little less um, intimidating to get set up on than a Vive, for instance. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I guess right now it's at the same price point as the Oculus, so although yeah. the Oculus does need, I think, a higher hardware to actually run it, but yeah, that's interesting. All right, we'll take one more question from the chat. I also want to throw out an interesting hypothesis that's <laughs> developing as we're talking about AR and VR. People are saying that AR is going to be used as this sort of dystopic advertising platform, <laughs> and people are going to use VR to escape from that. So <laughs> it's just a funny hypothesis on how it could all play out. But let's get to the question. So people are wondering, e, um, where do you get inspiration for your content? You know, does it come from movies, other games, maybe somewhere else? Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it, um, it comes from from just about everywhere. Um, I have actually a, a list of uh, game ideas that I keep in like a Google Doc that's forever. Nice. Long. That's smart. And, um, yeah, it, it, and it comes from all over the place. So yes, you know, from movies and um, you know, cultural artifacts. Um, and that's kind of where the theme for Darknet came from. Mm -hmm. um, from other games, for sure. You know, I've definitely like Tactera. Its gameplay was in large part inspired by uh, Command and Conquer, and it's sort of right. it's like tone and feel and like the you know radio communications of your troops and stuff like that. <laughs> um, and then it comes from just everywhere. So like um, I can't give as specific examples, but like I was listening to a, um, a history book. Okay. And I, uh, I got an inspired for a game and I like wrote down sort oh, of, nice. yeah, like I have sort of an outline for a, um, a card game about international relations. Oh, that's cool. And, uh, <laughs> I was looking at the, you know, the pattern of a, uh, a bathroom floor tile <laughs> and started mapping a board game or like, you know, a game system that plays out on that grid shape. Nice. Um, so yeah, no, I think it's, it's, that those wheels are constantly spinning and just about anything could, could trigger, you know, an idea. Um, awesome. and, then, and then sometimes it's like, you know, I, I'm intentionally trying to come up with something like a new platform's coming out and I want to, um, try to figure out something cool for it. You know, it's like a good opportunity from a practical perspective. Yeah. And, you know, it, it I'm, I'm like trying to delve into that and, and find something neat. Awesome. Who else would you want to see actually interviewed and get their thoughts about development in general? I, I mean, the, the guys, uh, I'm actually, um, I'm pretty good friends with the guys at Turbo Button Inc. Okay. Um, or Turbo Button Entertainment. Um, they are a, uh, they're Holden and Nick, and they're in LA, cool. and they've made um, a few really cool VR games. Um, so they, their most recent was Along Together on Daydream. Before that, they did Floor okay. Plan a game that takes place entirely in an elevator. Yes, that's um, one I've heard of. Yeah. They did an game on Gear VR, and before that they did some just like really funny, cool stuff. Like uh, they did A Night at the Roculus, which was like sort of a head bobbing game for the DK2. <laughs> um, and uh, what was it called? SMS Racing, a texting while driving game, where you're, you're in a VR race car and um, 
you get texts and you have to physically look down away from the road to respond to the texts oh God. <laughs> while driving or else you lose friends and then that's that's even worse than losing the race yeah exactly um <laughs> Anyway, I mean, I'm just like huge fans of theirs and I, I try to visit them whenever I can. They uh, they put so much like, not only are they technically really proficient, mm. but they put so much charm and um, just this wonderful attitude into their game. <laughs> um, and, and that's something like my games, they, you know, they have a certain style and, and, you know, there's a part of me that comes through, but it's, they tend to be sort of more serious and it's like strategy and like, I like strategy. That's that's my favorite type of genre. Yeah. At some point, you have to sort of roll your eyes at a game that's really trying hard to make you feel <laughs> cool. Um, <laughs> their games just make you like smile, and yeah, it, it's it's it comes off really well. Um, and I think that would be an interesting perspective too. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll try to reach out and see see if we can get them on because I I definitely like uh, Four Plan. Four Plan's a really good one. Yeah, that was one of my favorites of theirs. So. Thanks so much again, uh, E. McNeil, for coming on. And uh, thanks again for the chat, because you guys were awesome. Those are really great questions. Um, if you haven't, you can definitely follow him on social media and check out Darknet and TechTerra, both really awesome Gear VR games. Um, they also work with the controller, which I think is really cool, too. Um, and yeah, also, you can follow us all on social, because that I think that's a really way to keep up to date with all, all the things we do. So with that, it's been Fuse Man. Hassan. And E. McNeil. And we're sending out. <laughs>